Hey YouTube, it's John FX here, and I'll be showing you how to shoot yourself through a mirror. Here's what you'll be making. Ooh, that didn't look too good. Anyways, let's get started. Alright, first we're going to make a new composition. I'm going to make mine uh, 1280 by 720 and I'm going to end up stretching my footage out and fitting it to my composition. So I'm going to import my footage here and stretch it out. I'm going to transform and fit to comp. You're now going to take the footage that you shot with your tripod without moving it and you're going to cut it down to the beginning where it shows both of both sides in the mirror like it should normally be. Now I'm going to find the part in the footage where I'm on the left side trying to shoot my uh, right side. So I'm going to rename that video, I'm going to call it Evil Left Side. After I have my Evil Left Side set up here, I'm going to find my good right side that's unfortunately going to be shot, and I'm going to try to match them up. I duplicated the layer, and then put the opacity down to 50% on both of them. That way I can see when my left side is shooting my right side, and I can match them up. After I line the clips up so that my left side shoots my right side, I put the opacity up to 100 again. Now we're going to select my bad left side here, and I'm going to use the pen tool and make a mask around it. After I make the mask, I'm going to feather it out a little bit. You might see that part of my hand is going past the mask, so I'm going to have to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to fill in that black space with some background footage until the good side comes in. Now that that's done, we're going to import our muzzle flash. Match up the muzzle flash to where you shoot the gun and rotate and size it. Now we're going to be adding a blurring glow to the muzzle flash.
Now I'm going to import a shell casing and match it up to where I shoot the gun. Select the bullet shell size and rotate it properly, and then hit P, and I'll bring up your keyframe. Then go up around nine to ten frames and bring it out of the frame. Now all you have to do is add the curve to where the shell casing is going to travel. Now you're going to duplicate the footage on the left and you're going to make it one frame long. This is where you're going to add blowback to your gun. On the duplicated layer, select the pen tool and begin going around the top of the gun. Bring the duplicated layer back to add the blowback effect to the gun as if the top went backwards. And now we're going to add a directional blur to it. Now you're going to duplicate the left side's footage and make the blending mode add. Here I use the ellipse tool to go around the gun and you can select the pen tool and outline any areas that you think that light would show if you were to shoot the gun there. Make sure to feather any masks that you make and adjust the opacity. This layer should be set to 100% when the gun is first fired, and then 50% in the next frame after that to give it the kind of effect that the light is dying off after you shoot the gun. Here's a blood splat that I made with several items from other websites, and I selected the blending mode and made it screen. I had to set a mask here so that the blood wouldn't travel past the window. I imported this picture of blood on a white background and I used the blending mode multiply and then I made it into a 3D layer and fit it to the window.
I made the blood's opacity 50% when the shot originally went off, and then the frame after that I made it 100. I hope that this tutorial helped you out. You can hit subscribe for more tutorials like this in the future. Click the annotation to watch the final video. Thanks for watching.